guys. Uh, what we're going to show you today is a little inside action on the Maximus. Really haven't done a lot of videos on it, so we're uh, going to give you the update from our last video on it. Uh, we brought it to SEMA uh, since our last video in bare metal and uh, kind of want to show you a lot of the small details that you probably wouldn't notice um, unless you actually did it like what we did. So, uh, of course, if you watched our, our last video, you can see basically right from here all the way down into the door, we sectioned the fender and widened the fender, basically pie cut the door and widened the fender all the way out. Then we went ahead and fully welded and hand pounded it. So there's no, obviously this is a, you know, all metal finished hand pounded right here. Um, we went ahead and sliced out the wheel arcs and widened them up for this big 31 inch tire. Uh, okay, another trick thing that we did is normally there's some bolt on tail moldings right here. We went ahead and handmade our own and shaped our own uh, tail molding, welded it in, metal finished it. We sucked the bumper to where, well actually we widened, we ended up widening the bumper, but you know, changed the shape to where it, it matches with the shape of the fender. And then we actually lowered uh, the fender line here, uh, basically so the bumper is really a nice gapped around that. Okay, uh, some other trick things that uh, you may not notice is that instead of gapping it, we went ahead and cut this entire piece out and handmade a new piece here. So when we, the gap is built into the metal. So all the metal, metal gaps here, we ended up just making new metal pieces and welding them in and then metal, metal finishing them in. Again, even with the gap here, we went, ended up cutting here, adding the metal, and then metal finishing it. Another trick thing uh, that you don't see a lot of is a lot of people will just, where the roof meets the rear quarter, they'll just put these two pieces together and they'll let it. Well, we decided that the car had so much work that we didn't just want to let it, so we went ahead and welded in a metal strip, again metal finished it, but what made that trick is we actually had to cut the inside of the car to get a dolly on the inside so we could actually metal finish it to where we could get it smooth, so that was a bitch. The bumper here, you'll notice there's no bumper bolts. We, all the bumper bolts are gone. This entire lower section has been contoured to the rear bumper for the plate the, the bumper, you can see a section here where it was widened. We widened it in multiple places. And then again, then we went ahead and uh, metal finished that. So you can take a look at the rear. It's really got a smooth, nicely gapped finish, but tons and tons of hours involved in that. Another thing that, that we did that I think is really neat to point out because it's very hard to tell is this whole rocker assembly, we went and handmade this whole rocker assembly and then rolled it underneath the frame to the pinch. So if you look at the side of the car, you won't see the pinch on the bottom of the car because this is actually rolled over the pinch and this in effect it lowered, uh, it made the car look lower by making this entire rocker assembly. And then we went ahead and sliced the fender, we had to add uh, an amount of material here on the front fender to match that lower rocker. Again, all completely metal finish. Okay, so that's on the outside, so I wanted to show you a little bit on the inside of the car. Is This is kind of, although this is not finished right now, come on and take a look. We went and hand carved. Uh, well, not hand carved. We went and CNC machined a twin billet gas tank. So the gas tank has a 91 octane cell. 
So this is your 91 octane cell. We use a Aeromotive A1000 pump. That's a drop-in unit and it has a 100 micron uh, pre-filter. Uh, it has the fuel level senders and then we went ahead and cut into the gas tank all the recesses for the fuel lines and then hard lined all the fuel lines down into the car. So here is your primary fuel fill. Here is your secondary fuel fill. It's all completely divided and O-ring sealed inside of the tank. So again, 91 octane, 116 octane in the secondary cell. That's what we call NRE octane on demand. So here's a nice overall view of the tank, the twin pumps, the two feeds, the two returns, and the rollovers, along with the one fill and the second fill, and the lines going down the tank. Then we went ahead and hand formed all the metal in the back, and you can see how the cage is tying into a lot of the major structure points of the car. Made these blisters, this is where the coilovers land in, inside of these blisters. Water jet, this Nelson Supercar logo, and then bucked, uh, bucked it in. You can see some of the tub work, monster tubs in this baby. And another trick feature, we water jet these trunk hinges at a billet. And then attach to the cage the mounting location uh, for the trunk engines. Because with the big tubs, uh, we weren't able to use the factory hinges. You can kind of see right, right there where we spliced in um, and welded that section of the uh, quarter for the bigger tires. So let's, here's another. Uh, kind of a slick view of the car, you can just see that the, the slickness of the metalwork here. Again, no body work done to this. This is all just metalwork here. Again, it's all been fully welded. You can see where that seam, let me see if we can actually tell. You can see the discoloration of where the weld was. It's hard to even tell. But yeah, this is a pretty good view where you can actually tell where it was welded here. This fuel location right here, of course, when we widened it, it would have looked odd. So we had to cut the location out and move it, graft it in, and then, you know, re-panel beat the sucker. Some more trick metal work on the rear package tray. We wanted the cage to fit really tight. So we made new panels back there, welded them in. Metal finished in the speaker holes. Let's see what a nice fit that cage is through there. But let's just take a walk down the slickness of it all. Just a nice view of the rear of the car. It's too bad in the shop we don't have a lot of room to give you a big view. But I just really want to show the quality of the finish work that we're doing here. Just so you can see the level of where it's at right now. Of course, we still have a lot more work to do to it, but it's a pretty nice piece just looking at it. So you're looking at 18 inches of rubber right there. 31 inches tall, 18 inches wide on a 20 inch rim. So here's a nice view, a nice close up view of how fine the metal finishing and welding are. And you can see the weld going down there. Right there you can see a little bit of pitting and you can see the actual width change. But if you look at the fender itself and you look down it, it sure looks nice. Okay, here's a view of the sheet metal work we did in the rear. 
So we've had to make new frame rails uh, much higher. We did a whole custom rear suspension. And here's all the bead roll work and the rivets, the new tunnel that we made. Kind of kind of mimic the factory uh, straight presses there to kind of have it look a little more uniform. Look at these monster tubs. And then there's some of the door panel work that we're doing, Eric Thorson did for us. You can see how the cage is mounted into its own pad. Then on the cage we've got this low door bar and then even though it has that low door bar we've got these removable door bars for the track that just clip in. And with Scott, Scott wanted to keep the factory theme so uh, we did kind of a stock style seat. We call them the vagina pleats and uh, kind of did the three vagina pleats there with a with nice stitching all leather. It's perforated in the center. We went ahead and um, CNC machined the dash and uh, had Shannon over at Redline make us some really nice gauges. It's a GPS Speedo, 260 mile per hour, 8,000 RPM tack. Um, this fuel gauge right here it has a switch, which when you switch, you can go in between each tank. Um, and of course, you've got all the engraving that we've done with the dash. There's the washer. And, you know, there's the lights. Sorry for the poor video, but it just is what it is. And, you know, a little more of the tunnel there. It's kind of neat to see how we flanged the tunnel to the floor so you're not seeing a bunch of edge welding there. Well, it's going out of focus. So it's all flanged all the way around. Willwood pedal assembly. Here's another view of how the rocker got tied in. So you can see where, where we folded it around. Of course, it's all new and hand fabricated right there. Another nice little cage plate for the cage to land. And now let's go look where the magic happens. All right, so this is where the magic is happening. Of course, everything you see here, it's not finished. So, you know, I'm sure I'll get the comments of, oh God, but you know, uh, hand formed this piece. And then did it on the Pull Max. Our Billet Alien Hemi intake, 16 injector intake with the anteater snout and dual blow off valves. We've got our one off billet valve covers. And if you look close, what's really trick about this with the Maximus 2000 horsepower logo is that's removable. The spark plugs are underneath it. So if you look close here, you see where the spark plugs are going to pop out of the back of the valve cover. So that covers up the kind of messiness of the wires. We've got billet control arms, coil over suspension. Of course, our mirror image turbochargers. On the Willwood Masters, we've got these JCG billet reservoirs and uh, our boy uh, Rudy's line work. Really neat, some really neat stainless line work. Some billet hood hinges. We went and custom fabricated our own uh, cradle and front suspension. And you can see some of the exhaust works, just some of the quality of the welding. All 
All right, so that's a preliminary view of a 572 cubic inch, all alloy, 16 fuel injector, dual fuel, twin intercooled Hemi that we call Maximus. Something, another trick deal is if you look in the corner here, you'll see we've got a water to air intercooler in the corner. Here's our radiator assembly. Big boy with twin 16s. And of course we've got another intercooler on this side. The cage lands through the firewall into the suspension point right there. If you notice too, we've actually mimicked the shape of the motor into the firewall. So we've uh, recessed the firewall to add shape, kind of just like a ghost uh, deal there. And then we made this really trick fuel regulator assembly that comes out at a 45 degree that mounts into the back of the manifold. So there's your one fuel regulator that's all internally drilled and boost referenced. And here's another fuel regulator, all internally drilled and boost reference. Really slick. And of course, air conditioning, power steering, alternator. So here's another sneak peek of the other part of the dash and how we are actually 3D'd and Kellered the original lines, vertical lines going on the dash. Added our Maximus logo and you know the counter cut around the cage. So it's kind of trick that it's going to go around the cage. Pretty trick. All billet. Flip it over there, James, so they can see this just was a chunk of billet at one point. And if you look close, here, pull that out of the way. We've got our vintage air. Our Magnum uh, air conditioning unit mounted inside. Alrighty. And that's about it for this, this update. So, hope you like it. <laughs>